Our air quality in Pittsburgh is horrendous and um, just living here I'm two times more likely to get cancer in my lifetime. I'm more likely to get asthma, lung disease, heart disease, strokes. A lot of people don't know the links between climate change and racism. The communities that are already facing the brunt of environmental issues are communities of color. Our zip codes can really determine our quality of life and how long we live. In Allegheny County, uh, which is the county that Pittsburgh resides in, it is especially prevalent that communities of color and low-income communities face the brunt of environmental health issues. The places where black and brown people live are the same places where we have pollution-emitting industries. So it's not because Black folks wanted to live around pollution, but the structural racism and permitting process of our society have made it so that that's the only place that we could live. Uh, health impacts include not only asthma and respiratory illnesses, but diabetes, cardiovascular diseases, and these things put us in a position to be more susceptible to pandemics like coronavirus. It is devastating to see that the EPA is pushing such a racist agenda. That's exactly what it is. Because what the EPA is doing is they're using the cover of COVID as a distraction to push through an agenda that is completely anti-protecting human health and the environment, that is totally supportive of the coal industry and achieving the objectives of big business. So my hope for today was planting the seed for starting that dialogue of environmental racism in Pittsburgh, but I also really wanted to get my audience that I've you know, gained over the last year of Pittsburghers who want environmental change to come out because you can't really be an environmentalist without uh, caring about social justice issues. No justice! No peace! No racism! You gotta advocate for those in the high polluted neighborhoods because that's something they have to deal with on the daily. Their voices are not being heard. You know, we gotta use our voices and we gotta make sure that amplify their voices. Because if you're gonna talk about Black Lives Matter, you gotta talk about every aspect of Black Lives Matter, including police brutality, including environmental racism, including systemic racism. I wasn't necessarily aware of how abundant environmental racism is in our country and in um, the city I live in until after I started organizing. Before the quarantine, I had been on a streak of 10 months of striking for climate action in Pittsburgh. And I started striking on Fridays and it was very spontaneous. And um, I also striked alone for about four weeks, which was hard. But after that initial month, I started getting some company. The entire time that I was striking, I was completing my senior year of high school. I was so preoccupied with the idea that enough is enough. We can't continue saying yes to new plants or new factories. I was fed up and I wanted to get their attention. We have to embrace the fact that climate, coronavirus, racial injustice, these are all huge, big picture items that we're trying to tackle one at a time, recognizing that they have a collective determination on how we move forward in the future. 
but you got to do it one step at a time and recognizing that each and every one of us can do our own thing in our own space. We can all wear a mask. We can all make sure that we are registered to vote and that we are aware of the policies that our candidates and elected officials are uh, advocating for.